Welcome back this last segment. Welcome back this last segment of the 933 KFM Hot Set. Let me start with the questions. Um, a, a listener here, Alan Mugabe, says, If my plot is shared among two landowners and my house is in one of them, do I still have full ownership of both? He's a, yeah, and I have been living on this same piece of land for 61 years. David, do you have an answer for him? Um, well, some of these questions might be billable. I don't know where I'll find Al Alan to give <laughs> <laughs> Alan to give him. And it is to illegal to, give him to, to work for free as a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least outside the pro bono uh, arrangement. But um, <laughs> I think the, 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 simple, the simple answer is um, if he's a customary tenant, he has a Chibanja holding, he's entitled as against both landowners um, to ensure to have occupancy of that land um, and eventually if it's being sold um, he has the right to first uh, the first refusal to buy to buy that uh, the, you know the, the, the part of the plot which is on the land that's being sold either way um, similarly if he's selling he has to offer his uh, the first, first option, option to, 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 to the landowners. Mm. So the the rest I will I will I will let him know when he's in my chambers. For a fee. Um we'll give him a teaser. No but let me put this uh message uh from uh Muinebantuchi Ambrose who says who is a true landowner and why is land grab becoming rampant in Uganda? Oh dear. Uh, you own land either if you buy it from someone who holds it legitimately or if you it comes to you through inheritance gift. or a gift or you acquire it through customary rights and customary land rights is uh, you can own customary land as an individual and it is based on recognition within the the accepted norms of that community there's also family customary land which people know that this is for this family mm. and then there is for this clan like in Acholi we have grazing land we have hunting ground if you go and fence grazing land I'll tear down the fence yeah. because I'll be chasing an animal at top speed and you better not get in my way because mm. this, you may stop my spear instead of the animal anyhow those are ways in which you can own land the World Bank used to be obsessed with titling. Mm. You know, everybody should have a land title. But eventually, they have moderated their call for fast track titling because it was going to, to create landlessness. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, when you have 90% of the people subsisting on the land, you better have a policy which actually encourages investment in land by smallholders. Why, why should we have a, a Madivani alone. Let the Madivani come, but also the the government should create a stimulus yes. to, to so that I can also have an incentive. Yes. If the government built a sugarcane factory, I would be very stupid not to become an outgrower. Mm. This is this is where government is failing people. The Kaguta family, they have been in the milk business for a long time. You know, but now instead of the Kaguta family setting up the milk processing plant, they bring Samir uh, Limited to be the one that come and make milk for us. When the Kaguta family, they are historicals in the milk business. So I think the government is failing to tap, mm. to tap mm. the, 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 the yeah, to, to tap and nurture mm. the local initiative. So the stimulus is lacking. And, and, and even this money which they are investing, the government is the one guaranteeing it. By the way, if you go to India, the original home of the Madivanis and all these other people, there are sugar plants that make 50 bags a day, 100 bags a day, small ones. You don't have to impose on me uh, one big manufacturer. Let them come and compete with me. Mm. Mm. Or maybe come and gather the sugarcane mm. from local produce. Uh, I mean, smallholder producers and process at once. People, people vote with their feet. Yes. You know. And, 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 and a quick point uh, to 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 complement what Chairman Mao was saying. Um, lack of imagination sometimes is is, is 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 our problem, because if we have a sugar grower who's coming in to produce much needed sugar, 
let's not go into the issues of whether we're the cheapest producers of sugar in the region, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you've got a sugar plant, um, you've got people on the on the land, and you've got the competing need for sugar. Um, could there be a way of incentivizing these people who are on the land to leave the land not for a lump sum of just you know here you are go away? And then they have to find, well, either A, by being outgrowers, but B, I think more importantly, getting them together in cooperatives mm. um, and making them shareholders, equity shareholders in these companies which are coming to invest. Because they're putting in the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. If there wasn't land, there wouldn't be a sugar plant there. Now, if we come yeah. in as the contributors of the land and government is helping marshal us into a corporate unit, which will now be receiving a check at the end of the quarter, which check will be distributed amongst several people by generation, you know, proof of identity, etc., sorted out. You, 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 you have a solution to a long-standing problem in, mm. many, in many situations that people will not see development as an enemy, that mm. I may be able to move to an urban area, expecting that my check from our share, in, in my part share, in the Masoli Cooperative, can pay my rent here. Now that I can pay my rent, let me go and look for another job. I become a, a messenger, I become a, a clerk or something, whatever I may, may do. But w sometimes lack of I imagination that this thing is done as it was in the 19th century. Is it? That we're just going to go into an area, we're going to chase out the Red Indians, and we're going to take it over and it's going to become America. This, <laughs> this <Cowboy>. paradigm <laughs> of development yeah not work. Mm -hmm. It is going to turn people, it's already turned people mm -hmm. against each other. It's turning people against investors. And against government. And against mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. And and we don't want that. We need pro-people government, pro-people investment, pro-people development as a paradigm. Let me take a message from Maganya Justice who says, what makes me wonder where we are heading because they use the Baforochi, Bachiga or Tubunyoro, but now I hear of Bahima Banyankore being transported to Zimbabwe to grab land. Believe me, we have land in Uganda, but it's in the hands of few individuals. But thieves in government are investing in land, thus displacing others. I don't think the population pressure should be a major cause. The problem is income inequality caused by this government through political favors. Don't lie to us. We have huge vast land in Uganda. Jackie, don't you have vast land in Bushenyi? Do you come from Bushenyi? No, the first I don't. Place? <laughs> She's from a place which is in trouble. Yes, <laughs> from Kavale. Um, Are you from Kavale or from yeah. Fort Porto? Mm -hmm. I'm married in Fort Porto. I come from Kavale. Okay. Yeah. Now, this, this, he's raising an interesting issue. Is, is it greed? <laughs> is it corruption? <laughs> is it a high population? Which is it? I, I think it's all those, um, like we've discussed around the table. Um, the high population pressure is a very real problem at least in where i come from in kavale where you have um you know lots of children little land and each year you're parceling it out that definitely forces some to be removed from kavale to other places you have um greed that arises from um we were just in a meeting yesterday but one discussing the whole succession and inheritance law and and half the trouble that the administrator general has is the greed around you know when people die and suddenly there's this land that all of us have been eyeing because we are poor or, or because we think it will solve our financial problems. We have debts, we have school fees to pay, we have, you know, we need to maintain ourselves and so people will encroach, will, will dispossess their own families um, in order to take care of their short-term, you know, money needs. Um, it's a whole issue around, um, like we were saying, I mean, land is, is, is unfortunately almost the only means that I have to, that many people have to survive and they'll protect it by whatever means and if it is taken away from them they'll go to repossess at you know by whatever means so let's you know the desperate the desperate times calling for desperate measures um so it and and poverty you know we had talked about it that mm. that poverty that where, where people have no no other option um no other way to access food no other way to access a livelihood no other way if if the only thing i have to sell to meet a problem is maybe my piece of land my small piece of land which i'm not thinking five years ten years down the road i'm thinking my need is today and i have the land today and i need to sell it today so it's 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 all those it's never you know it's not just one problem yeah okay let me take the last set of messages together so that we can give uh, same answers uh buangu shabani juma wants to know what the difference is between a chapa and a land title a quick answer for him <laughs> 
same it's the same thing, I think. <laughs> same thing in different languages. In different yeah. languages. Yes. Okay. Um, Okelo Lawrence says, why in Uganda today rich people are grabbing land away from the poor ones, claiming to be the rightful owners of the land, and the government isn't doing nothing about it? Because it's also land grabbing. Uh, why isn't the government able to do something about it? It's an interested party. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a land grabber. Unfortunately, I mean, we laugh about these things, but, you know, it, it, is, it has also played in the game. And again, I said, remember, when institutions don't work, when I feel like, yes, even if the land grab has happened, I should be able to have that matter resolved in a court of law. But I am going to file a land case this year and have it resolved five years from now. And in the meantime, where am I? Mm. I will unfortunately maybe also be grabbing somebody else's piece uh, andrew kaweka says can we have infrastructure roads future road reserves sewage lines power lines etc plan for the weather kampala uh, the law concerning roads is very clear when we were opening roads by the way we knocked down kiosks and illegal structures in gulu there were no riots we did it Be because we explained to the people and uh, sometimes, of course, there was resistance. There was a relative of one of the generals who even slapped the town clerk. When we were opening the village mm. roads, villagers were saying we should be compensating them for roads built in 65. Mm. So we told them, uh, you have to measure like uh, 15 meters from the middle of the road for a rural road. And your land, your customary land starts from there. And when you explain to people very clearly, but the problem is with this compensation saga is that they are interested parties. The people who work in government go and tell these people that, you know, you are entitled to this much, but 10% is mine. This is the whole circus. And then they manipulate the compensation system to make Actually, sure that the money costs. Many but people can free land for Legitimacy, roads. because you see, the freeing of land for roads would not be a problem, to, should not be a problem to anybody. Who, you know, maybe apart from you know people I, I i can't think of anybody who who moves from wherever they want to go home on their own land we we all have to cross <laughs> somebody else's land maybe the kabaka across buganda but mm. still we have to move <laughs> on, on somebody else's land so so clearly it shouldn't be a problem the problem as chairman mao says is when i feel that chairman mao is asking me to do this in order that he may benefit more yeah. than me mm -hmm. if chairman mao comes in and says look this is for the benefit of everybody i'll be embarrassed i'll look foolish if i'm saying no, I, I don't want a road to go by here. Okay. Is applied yes, but if I know Chairman Mao has occupied 10 road reserves and no one is doing it he's, you know, and he's only coming to move me, I will say no. That's the problem. Let me just take this last message from uh, Nathan uh, Ochela who says, thanks for the program. Land issues are very sensitive and must be handled with care. A few years ago, the council came from nowhere and started demarcating the land surrounding our small town, dubbing it government land. We lost so many pieces of land. Then They then allowed buyers this caused a lot of chaos in the area. They are almost, there was almost bloodshed. Some cases are still in court. I would like to ask, how does government land come about? Nathan of Kapir Town Council, New Ngora District. Can you no. give him a quick answer? Because that's the government didn't. The government of Uganda didn't come with any land from <laughs> where it came from. It came from Britain. It didn't come with any land. The land belonged to the people. Um, the people must uh, voluntarily and uh, by consensus, cede some of the land to government for government to be able to function for their betterment. So that's how we all need to agree uh, on national parks, on roads, etc. Because we need those things for government to function. But we shouldn't be in a situation where we're in a zero-sum game competing for land with the government of Uganda. It didn't come with any land from anywhere, wherever it came from. David Mpanga, thank you very much for making time for the show. Thank you very much, Jackie. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Noban Mao, for making time for the show. Thank you very much to you all our listeners for joining us tonight and always, and especially those of you who gave us feedback and each one who listened in. Thank you very much to Nile Gold for sponsoring the show and to Ban Cafe for the coffee that we have during these discussions. Good evening. KFM Hot Seat. The hottest debate on all relevant topics live. Every evening, 7 to 8 p.m. KFM Hot Seat in association with Nile Gold.